Modern math comprises of four sections counting, arrangement, probability, sets, permutation, and combination. However, uh, these areas come under the chapter of arithmetic. So there is no separate section called modern math, it is part of arithmetic per se. Uh, today we will understand how to solve any modern math question which comes in your exam. In your exam you would get around 10 questions in this section. Uh, these are all higher weightage questions. First let's start with counting. Uh, I have started off by asking you these two simple questions. First one, how many dots are there? Can you count the number of dots which are there on the screen right now? You might have counted like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Is there any other way? Yes, you can count the three rows and you can count the three columns and then you can say 3 into 3. Rows into columns. So you have totally 9 dots here. Let's see the next question. How many routes are there from A to C? Let's say A and B and two cities and I am drawing the roads from A to B. You can see there are three roads connecting A and B. Now let me take it forward and let's say C is another city and these are the roads connecting B and C. How many roads are there? So generally you could count and say A to B the top and then B to C there are two roads. Or you could say A to B is in the middle road and there are again two roads from B to C. Or you can say A to B there is the third road and there are two more roads from B to C. So totally you got six. There is one way of counting. You can see A to B has three roads. B to C has two roads. And if you multiply three and two, you will get six again. So from these, both these examples you see that multiplication is the rule of counting. Whenever you want to count any item, always use multiplication, not addition, subtraction or division. Okay, now let's take another sum. The basic rule of counting is multiplication. And here is an illustration. In how many ways can 5 students get into a train with 5 compartments? Take a minute, pause this video and try to solve this. Okay, let's start counting. Uh, the step one, whenever you see sums like this, always focus on the picking of the objects. Uh, the other alternative is placing them. Now you must always focus on the picking of the objects because that's how you do these sums. So here there are five students. You will have to pick the student and put it in the compartment. Similarly, pick up, let's say, a ball and put it in the basket. Don't focus on the basket. Focus on the ball, picking of the object. Okay. So here there are five students pick up one student at a time that's the rule so here we have five students I would suggest that you put five dashes so let's say you pick up one student the first student in how many ways you can place this first student you can put them in any of these five compartments right so there are five ways of filling the first student the second person you can put them in the same compartment so that's another five ways the third person five ways fourth person five ways so the answer for this question is 5 into 5 into 5. We are doing multiplication because there is a fundamental rule of counting. Okay. Now you take some time and compute this sum. Okay. So here there are 5 people. So put 5 dashes. Now the first person you can fill in 5 ways. The second person you can fill only in 4 ways because you can't put the same first person, the second person in the same compartment as the first guy. The third person can be filled in three ways. The next person can be filled in two ways. So you would get 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 and that gives you an answer of 120. Okay, now you try out this sum. How many ways can 5 students get into a train with 5 compartments? The condition is no one should get into compartment 2. So as usual, you put 5 dashes, pick up the first guy, he can't get into compartment 2. So how many ways can he get into? Yes, he should get into the any of the other four compartments. So the first person is four ways. Can the second person get into the same compartment? Yes. So it will be four, 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 four. And then as usual we multiply and then you get the answer. I hope it's clear. Now you try out this.
Okay, now pause the video and try out this sum. So five students, five compartments, A and B should be in the same compartment. So five dashes. Now the first guy can go in five ways. B, he has to go into the same compartment where A is. So he can go only one way. So that's one. Now here there are the two conditions. One is let's say there's no, nobody else gets into any other compartment. So if that's the case, then the third guy gets into any other four ways. The next guy gets into three ways, the next guy gets into two ways. Or if everyone can be in the same compartment, then it would be five into one into five into five into five. So there are two conditions out here. Now you try out the sum. Pause the video for one minute and try it out. So as usual, there are five dashes. A and B should not be in the same compartment. So the first guy can go in five ways. The second guy can't go into the same compartment as A, so it should be in four ways. C, D, E can go in any of the other compartments. So that'll be five, five, five. Okay. So these are the overall rules. Try out the sum. In how many ways can five students A, B, C, D, E get into a train with five compartments? C, D, E should be in the same compartment. A and B should be in the adjacent compartments. Do it yourself. Okay, C and D and E should be in the same compartment. So A can go five ways, B can go five ways, C, D, E, C can go five ways, D and E should be in the same compartment as C, so that can be one way. Is this clear? As you should multiply. A and B should be in adjacent compartments. Now here there are multiple possibilities. I hope you got all of them. So A is five ways. B can't be in the adjacent compartment, right? But can he be to the right of A? Can he be to the left of A? There are two. If A is in the corner, then there's only one possibility. But if A is in the middle, there are two possibilities here. Can you observe the different possibilities? So you'll have to take each possibility and then you'll have to arrive at an answer. So let us try out the first case. A is in the corner. So if A is in the corner, B cannot be in the next place. So B can go in any of the th remaining three ways. C can go in the four ways, five ways. D can go in the five ways. E can go in the five ways. So the total number of cases here is three into five into five into five. The next possibility is A in the second compartment. Now here B can go in how many ways? He can go in two ways. Everyone else can go in five ways. Yes, did you get that? Okay, let's put A in the third place. Now B can go in how many ways? B can still go in two ways. Everybody else five ways. And now let's put A in the fourth place. That's again the same. Two into five into five. And the last case would be A in the fifth compartment. It will be the same figure as that what you get in the first compartment. So you will have to manually shift A and then you will have to count the number of ways of doing the other cases. So you will have to find those individual numbers and then what do you would you do to all these numbers? Here you must see one case like all these five cases won't happen parallelly. It's just one of these cases will happen at a time. So it's either the first case or the second case or the third case or the fourth case or the fifth case. It's not all the five cases happening at the same time. Whenever you have a condition like either or, either the first one or the second one, then you will have to add up all those numbers. So here we have either first case or the second case or the third case or the fourth case or the fifth case. The rule is addition. So either or add. If it is and, like here we have to arrange the first guy and the second guy and the third guy and the fourth guy and the fifth guy, then you have to multiply all the numbers. That's why we are multiplying 3 into 5 into 5 into 5 into 5. So either or is addition and is multiplication. So in this case, we will have to get those individual numbers like 3 into 125 is 2 into 125 plus 2 into 125 and then add up all these numbers.